All right, well, it's a few days later and I am back to working on this Mackie Sear 1604 project. And in the last video, I took this mixer, which I got completely non-functioning, and we analyzed that uh, we had a broken power switch. I took it apart, hardwired in the power switch, but I have some bent metal and things like that. But I did verify that the mixer does operate. So I believe in terms of getting a revitalized Mackie CR 1604 to use, this is the mixer that I want to use as the base. I've had this one apart for some time. I went through, cleaned everything, but I do have a variety of problems with this. But what I like about this one is it has the rotopod option, which is this plate here, a bracket on the side that allows you to rotate the jacks up to the top. The 1604 was interesting in that you could do that. I mean, that was an end user modification where you could buy this bracket and you could also rotate to flip the whole jack field, the whole pod, this back pod section, you could flip it underneath here. It would be quite tall standing up that way, but that would give you, I don't know how many rack spaces that would be, but it would reduce the amount of rack spaces that you'd need to maybe eight or something like that for this whole mixer. And so it was very flexible. There was other options to get a mixer mixer where you could connect two of them together. There's even a, a, a system called auto to add uh, MIDI automation to this, which was really interesting at the time. So this one has bad electronics. Maybe they could be fixed. That's not what I'm after right now. What I'm after is one good mixer. And it does have, you know, the good power switch and the sheet metal is good here. So the way I'm going to get started on this that I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this mixer apart and I'm going to take all of this stuff off and get down to where I've got this metal freed up. I will also need to get this uh, switch and this jack out of this mixer as well. So that's the next thing that I will be doing after that. Then we'll take this one apart this one needs general service. We need to clean everything on here, get the masking tape or sticky tape off of this, and then clean all of the faders. We also need to do some deoxid on these as well. There's a lot of stuff spilled on here that we want to clean off. But that's not what we're gonna do now. The first thing we're gonna do is disassemble this one, get the pod off of it, and then start to take that pod apart and keep track of all the nuts and bolts. Crazy thing about this one here is you can see that there's a variety of screws in here that just don't really look original. If I look at this one, I took a few of these out because I took the rack ears off, but if you look at the originals, we have these more of a panhead style black screw on here but on here we've got you know something these look like more hardware store styles i don't know if they changed those screws it just looks like maybe a mismatch like somebody's worked on this before and put in some different screws so nonetheless this is our donor mixer at this point this was 50 bucks i think um, we'll get 50 bucks worth of parts off of here there we go. In the next uh, segment here, in the next time lapse, I'll disassemble this. So I was making pretty good progress. I got 
all of the screws out except for this one, you can see right here, this screw is the wrong one for the application. That screw is larger than it should be. So what's happened is it's t tapped into the tab like this. And I don't know, it's sort of like there's a maybe a clip or welded on nut which is spinning on the back side of that. So I'm gonna work on that a little more and then I will be back. All right, so I was able to rotate this and you can see that the nut on the back here has rotated or been, you know, basically as, the, as this oversized screw was forced in there, it caused that nut on the back to break off. However, because I was able to rotate these two pieces relative to each other, I should be able to get in there to support the back with some needle nose pliers, which is what I'm going to try to do. So I cut this cable tie. I thought that was a little loop of wire, but actually we've got wires coming in and out. So we've got our 48 volt phantom power uh, apparently was coming off of this circuit board and coming up into here. This has, I don't know if this has a color code to it, but I think I'm going to cut. This is the line level signal. I think I'll just cut the thing free here so I can remove the transform. I'll have to, of course, we'll be using the wires and the parts most likely from that other board when we put this back together. But with that, I can take the transformer part here. Yeah, so that, that completely frees that up. We have another Molex connector for power to this board. And what have we got here? It's just a huge jack field. It is all labeled. Interesting. So there's a lot of diodes. Down here we've got some transistors. We've got these packages, these SIP package, probably op amps down in there. Very simple, there's, I thought we'd see a lot more circuitry on here for the mix bus and things like that because there's not a tremendous amount of circuitry on the other board. Well, that's all very interesting. But the main point is we've now liberated this piece is what, which we need for the, uh, for the project here. I'll take the power supply out. It's uh, extremely dusty, so I'll clean that up. And obviously I have some problems with the nut certs. These, these holes here are self-tapping. This appears to be made of aluminum, so it's quite lightweight now that I have it apart. But nonetheless, these parts can stay on here. I was thinking about taking those off, but I don't need to take those off. I just have to solder in the connections when I transfer the board. So what I want to figure out here is if I should pull these knobs up, like grab them with pliers or something. So I'm going to experiment with that. 
so that when I take the other one apart, I know what to do. So I'll clean up a little bit here and then we'll be back and decide what our next step is. Okay, I removed the power supply board, so I thought I'd take a minute since I have it out of there to show you what this power supply board is. And it was held in there with some nuts. You could see there's welded on or, you know, somehow welded on studs in there that hold that board in place. These two pads here, that's some solder, um, not solder, that's some, you can see there's some heat sink paste on those. Also looks like a little bit of an insulator as well. So I need to make sure I get that back together correctly. There's a little piece of plastic on there and the heat sink paste. But anyway, um, another typical linear power supply from that age. Not particularly complex, I suppose, but it, it does show that we have an 8515 and a 7915. So basically we're getting plus and minus 15 volts out of that to run this thing. And then over here, you'll also see that this, this shows plus minus and the 48 volts for phantom power. So this is what powers up basically the, the whole board plus providing 48 volt phantom power. These are the connections that, that were coming off that transformer. So after the comes out of the transformer, we've got the, the various voltages coming out of there, which I haven't measured that yet, so I'm not really sure what that is. Anyway, I thought that's interesting, nice power supply board that provides a nice plus minus 15, which is one of the reasons this board had pretty high headroom for the, for the age. Anyway, I'm gonna continue working on this. It is nearly stripped down now. I need to remove this BNC connector for the lamp and then clean it up a little bit and then we move on to the other, the other board, which we'll have to do the complete disassembly again in order to transfer this piece over to it. Oh, one other thing about it is that we had a date on here somewhere. Uh, the copyright on this board is 1995. So this is one that was certainly not from the first year of production. I think that when I got a board in the, I got mine in 1993, which probably would have been the first year of production so a couple years into the design of this board, it'd be interesting to compare it to the other one. I'm not sure the vintage of that one. Anyway, that's interesting. That's the power supply board. So I'm getting ready to start the transfer to the, what I'm gonna call this the A mixer. This is the one with the working electronics, the bad power switch. And uh, what's really bothering me is this masking tape. And I have a few minutes here before the end of the day. I'm gonna see if I can get this off. So the way I like to start removing adhesive like this, one of the things I'm gonna use is denatured alcohol. But the, the first thing I'm gonna do is just warm that up a little bit with the heat gun. And the heat gun uh, winds up being a very helpful tool when you're doing these kind of projects. So I'm gonna set this at not, not all the way up on the heat setting but I'm going to get that warm first, peel it a little bit, and then I'll use some alcohol to see if I can get that adhesive to come off of there. That, uh, came out really nice. I was able to get that off with just a little bit of heat, some denatured alcohol, and a guitar pick as a scraper. I don't want to overly aggressively scrape on this area or could, can easily scrape through the paint, which I've seen on a lot of these where somebody you know tries to use uh, something metal to scrape. I'll be cleaning that more. I think the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to true up. These are all skewed, you know, the faders are bent. Before I take it apart, I'm gonna true up a couple of these, like this one here, that are on here sideways, just kind of look through 
really it's more those, this one here. I'm going to pull those, the, the caps off of the faders, true those up, and I'll probably then remove all of the knobs and all the faders as well and soak those because they're really, really filthy, especially over here where we've got this spill, which looks like Coke or some kind of drink or I don't know what that is, but it's pretty disgusting. So I'll do that and that'll probably be the end of it for today. And then we'll be uh, back on this tomorrow. Alright, so I'm back. It's the next day. I took all the knobs and I soaked these in dishwashing soap and rinsed them in a, a colander a few times and um, they've come out really, really nice. Everything is brightened up. They look almost like new and if you remember they had Coke or something like Coke or coffee spilled on them. So these are looking great. So. That's the good news. I've also done a little bit more work on the mixer, which I'll show you. So I labeled these, this A and this is A, because I have two of these Sierra 1604s and the parts look similar and I was starting to get confused. So I've now labeled these so I could keep track of what each of the major assemblies is coming from. So off camera, I took apart the pod for the A mixer. The A mixer is the one that I'm going to use to actually get this thing going. The B mixer is donating some of its parts to make this thing work. So I've separated out the jack board, which you can see comes out. And I started to get a little concerned because the design is somewhat different on this mixer, the damage mixer from the other ones. When you really look at the, at this, let me get the other one over here. This is the B mixer back panel. You can see that a lot changed over the couple of years difference between these two mixers. The position of like where the serial number is is different. Just the appearance of the graphics has changed somewhat between these two boards. So I also found out the alignment is, of the, some of the screws has changed. So I was starting to think that well, maybe these things won't fit together. But anyway, I have determined this is the, the bad board. Let me get the, the parts aligned here. This is the one with the damage. So I want to transfer all of the electronics, the transformer. You'll notice the transformer between the different model years is quite a bit different. You'll see this this one from the the worst board is is a little bit smaller. Anyway, to keep things consistent and avoid trouble, I want to transfer to keep all the electronics together, the power supply. They may well be interchangeable, but since I just don't know, but I did find that this this is our good jack plate, and this is from the bad mixer, and this does just drop in. It just fits in there. I'm losing a few of these lock washers, which I'll have to get lined up. So I will have no problem with this. I was going to transfer the good cover plate. This is from this board. It's less... The, the one that goes with the B board is less damaged. However, the end plate doesn't line up for the, tr because the transformer is different, they change the mounting for the transformer. So between the B board and the A board, the holes are different. So that means I need to keep the one that's bent here, but this is something I can easily just straighten out. There is a little bit of a difference on the other end of it is that I guess in later model years they added a screw hole here where it didn't exist 
on, on the earlier models. So <clears throat> I'll use this plate from the mixer that goes with it. I'll straighten it out and then I'm going to use this. So I've started transferring all of the components to this, uh, to this chassis. This is the one from the donor board. And I've re-soldered the connection. The switch came from the donor. I mean, this switch and this power input jack came from the donor board. This is the original, I believe. It doesn't really matter, but anyway. I've rewired these up exactly as they were on the original. One of the things that I realized from the one off of the broken board is that the fuse is blown on this because I was doing some metering just to make sure I was hooking this one up right. One of the interesting things about this type of power jack is there's a fuse down in here, which if I you just get a tool of some sort up under this little lip and you can pop that fuse out, which is how you replace the fuse if it's blown. And on the bad one here, this fuse that's in here, which is like a, a, a kind of little fuse, this, this fuse actually is blown from that. The point of this is, uh, not this part, but when you put the wiring back on, you want to make sure that you actually have the fuse wired in. The way this works is that the, the fuse connects across between this terminal and this one. If you were to wire this jack up between he, here and here to your power or to the transformer, then you wouldn't get any, any fusing. So you need to wire it in here. The power is going to come in off of this this terminal here into this kind of conductive bar and then the fuse connects across here. So if you use this type of thing to get the fuse to be in the circuit, you need to wire between here and here. So just kind of an interesting thing. If I reuse this, this does not appear to be broken. I could reuse this. I just need to replace that fuse. If I decide to actually try to restore the other mixer eventually, I'll just make sure I've got an appropriate fuse to put in here. And these, these fuses just pop in like that. So the fuse and the jack are integrated. So the other thing that I have transferred is the uh, power supply, which is very similar. It's just a direct fit. There's a few differences in the various holes. I had to make sure I get the transformer to lie in here correctly. The other thing I've done since I did the last update is I straightened out some of the bends that were on this. So I need to use the original cover plate here from the original mixer because this whole pattern right here is what connects to that transformer. And between this board and the other board, the transformers are different. Therefore, these holes are different. Okay, so here is a view of the board that has all of the input jacks. Here's the microphone XLRs. And this is the actual gain pot or the trim pot for each channel. And you can see that, you know, how they're just board mounted. And they have, you know, these knobs that will actually stick out of the back of the board. Now, in the initial testing of this board, this is actually the B board, the one that is donating parts to the good mixer at this point. You'll see that there's a, there's a lot of them, but in the testing, a lot of them were scratchy as well. So I previously said I want to put deoxit on that. Deoxit is this deoxidizer and lubricant that's commonly used to clean contacts 
the thing is it's only effective if it can get right onto the elements that are inside of there and the wiper and then you can you know basically turn it back and forth and clean it up wanted to see how effective this would be because this is sort of a sealed design there's no clear way that you could get a lubricant or deoxid into here and so rather than just a lot of people will just spray it and make a big mess and it actually doesn't really do anything. So I thought it would be interesting to actually take one of these apart and come up with a strategy. So this is the knob which I can remove. And then if you actually look at the part, you can unfold this. You could take these all out and take them apart, but that would be you know, actually way more work than it's worth. But if you look at the constituent parts, <clears throat> this is your resistive element, the circle there. And then down inside here is the wiper. And so what we want to do is get the cleaning solution down inside there. Now if you have a regular large pot like this, a lot of times it's open. So you could take your, your deox and just put a drop of it down here and maybe another drop over here and then turn the wiper a few times and that would spread the deox around on that resistive element that's in there. However, in a sealed design like this, there's no direct access to get in there. I think they're designed to work for the life of the product without you know actually having that happen. But what you will see is that this this piece ha turns through a little hole that's on the back of this thing right in the center. So you can see that that center hole through there. As far as I know that's kind of your only access to get something in there. It appears when you look at it from the top, when it's together, that there's a couple of holes that are open on the top. And you could try to put a little drop down in there, but it doesn't go anywhere. I assume these are alignment holes for manufacturing, but the, they actually don't result in anything going into that mechanism. So. The best way I've found, and I'm certainly open to input on this, is to try your best to get a little bit of, a little drop of deoxid on the back of this board, kind of like that, and then allow gravity to let it go in. So the way I've done this, we'll ultimately see if it works, is to turn the board, you know, is to turn this board upside down and then you can get inside of here and basically go in here and put the drop in then I actually leave this overnight so that it can run down in there. How effective that is I'm not sure but it appears to me that's about the only way to handle this. So once you've got it in there you can maybe the next day after it's had a chance to seep in then you can exercise these knobs and work it in there. You know, sometimes if it hasn't been used for a while, just twisting the knobs back and forth will help free them up. But we want to do something to try to help it while it's open. And that's what I've come up with right now. We'll ultimately see if that works. But I thought that was interesting. I don't really want to desolder all of these. This one here I believe I can still reuse if I put this back together. I can put it you know right back on this board. But I thought it was interesting. It's always interesting when you've got these the opportunity to learn something in the process to take things apart, see how they work, and then have a better understanding. So that's that. I'm going to continue transferring parts into the pod then we need to move on to working on the faders and the general cleanup of the rest of that board. 
So that's all for today. In the next episode, we'll put the pod all back together. Then we're going to open up and clean and service the fader board. And hopefully we'll get everything assembled and get the entire mixer project complete and back together. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video very soon.